Amen. So we're going to move on from the um, table of showbread, and we're going to deal with the altar of incense now, which, if you look on the little chart here, it is just before the veil. This will be the, the last piece of furniture that we deal with before we enter the Holy of Holies. So you need to start getting ready. <laughs> Because, you know, you die in there if you don't, if you're not. So, just a thought. Anyway, so here it is right here. <clears throat> and um, I think I'll just read and comment as we go here. But there are two names, basically, for the, this altar. And it is an altar. The altar of incense and the golden altar. And that's, that's in contrast to the two altars that are the brazen altar, the brass altar, and then the altar of incense. And I don't know about you, but when I first realized there were two altars in the tabernacle, it piqued my interest. Why are there two? And one of them's gold and the other one's brass. One of them's big and the other one's small. One of them you offer animals on it and the other one you offer incense and uh, just just that much information can you know already start making you go lord speak to me you know lord speak to me because these are things that that the lord set up and and uh, i am a firm 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 believer <clears throat> that within them is not just a shadow of Jesus, but within them is the elements that God wanted us to get from the very beginning pertaining to Jesus. Um, I, and personally, I don't think a shadow does you a whole lot of good, but when he is the fulfillment of that, and we see him as fulfilling that thing, fulfilling it. See, I mean, because we can see him as, as uh, you know, the, fulfill, the, the guy who fulfills the law, but he's the fulfillment of all of those things, all of this. And as the fulfillment then, he fills that full. Fulfillment, fill full, meant, I always say. And he fills that full, <clears throat> and therefore, we can know him in ways that we wouldn't know him because... You know, frankly, other than the book of Hebrews, it doesn't mention the altar of incense. Well, actually, that's not true. Um, John the Baptist's father and so forth. But, but it doesn't really give us a whole lot of information and that we're going to have to go to the Old Testament and ask the Holy Spirit to do what he does. And what is that? <clears throat> he reveals the New Testament, no, I mean the New Covenant in the Old Testament. Okay, the Old, the Old Testament is the old, the books of the Bible that are called the Old Testament. The Old Covenant is the covenant that God made with man in, you know, in many different places, but certainly on Mount Sinai. Um, and what we're and the New Testament is the books of the Bible that represent the New Testament. But the New Covenant is who Christ is, not not what He's done for us, but who He is, and therefore who we have become in oneness with Him through His death, and through His burial, and through His resurrection. All right. <clears throat> so I'm just going to read a little bit and then comment here. There were two altars. And again, we're talking about the brazen altar and the altar of incense. The people of God had access to the brazen altar, but only priests could approach the altar of incense. Okay, so that's, that's significant because we are all priests. Um, to me... Um, well, I won't say that yet. If you are a New Testament priest, then you should know how this is to be fulfilled in your ministry to the Lord and in your life. 
Death rose up from the brazen altar, but sweet incense rose from the other. So, the, so <clears throat> what, we're, what we're understanding here is that God is gaining two different things, and there are two different purposes for these altars. And if you will, there's two different deaths. Um, and um, I don't know how much this is in my, in my notes, but um, the one altar representing, well, we could just, we could just put it like this. The, the brazen altar represents the cross. I appreciate this board being here. <laughs> and um, I think I might be able to, look at that. Yes, sir. <clears throat> You're not going to get away from the cross. <laughs> Um, the, uh, the first one representing the cross, and you could almost even say the, uh, the place of death, you could say the um, place where Jesus died, you could say his death for sin, you could say his death on other fronts also. Um, but there's another altar, and that altar is the altar of incense. And that represents the sweet savor of lamb life. It is the sweet savor of his nature. It is the thing that took him to the altar, the brazen altar. It is that selfless givingness that is him, that is him, not just an act. And, and so you could almost say, now, you know, but you could almost say, that the brazen altar represented an event. It's obviously more than an event, but certainly an event took place there. Um, but the altar of incense representing his sweet savor to God, because uh, it is a representation that the coals were taken um, and lit and then put the incense on top of it, and that burning, selfless giving is a sweet savor to God, that's representative of his nature. And there are a lot of people who know about the cross and they know about the crucifixion and they know about the, you know, Jesus died for my sins and da 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 and all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> and they completely miss all of the places in the New Testament that start describing the altar of incense without using that term, which is which is him, which is not just him, but you know, us give, you know, I can think of one real quick, actually, just right quick if I can find it here. Um, yeah. Um, okay, verse, uh, this is Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 31. <clears throat> All right, and so. What we're, what we're being given here is it can sound like we're just giving, being given commands. We're just being given um, things that we should do, Christian things that we should do. And the only reason why we would think that is because we have no clue that Jesus is fulfilling even now through us the fullness of what those shadows were about. He is filling them full in our lives because we're his body, because we are the, the vehicle of his life to this day. And uh, so it's, they're not just Christian things, and it's not just a Christian life that we're trying to live, and it doesn't even, you know, like I said, it probably uses the word Christian twice or three times in the New Testament, you know. Uh, but it uses the word Christ, you know, like seven at least in like the first three verses of Ephesians or something at one. <clears throat> so so I want you to I want you to just listen to this and consider this in light of being the fulfillment of the altar of incense by Christ in us, in his body, what was always meant to be. What was always meant to be. See. And we discount it. We say, well, the Old Testament is over. And so I have no thought about the altar of incense or any of the other, for that matter. Maybe the, maybe the brazen altar. But I have no thought about it. And yet the New Testament is constantly bringing up these different realities and these different places. And it's trying to bring us into a fullness 
that can allow him to, to fill all things. So let's read this. <clears throat> Verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. <clears throat> um, and so we say, okay, well, now do that. Well, you, you don't. There's an altar that's going to remove that and bring something else. But it's not going to be it's not going to be like the brazen altar where something happens to you. Oh Lord, l bring the fire down on me as it were. Oh Lord, do something in my life. Do a miracle. Change me. Fix me. Do all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> He's going to be the fulfillment of it. He is. He's the fulfillment of it. And there is no hope outside of Christ for any of us. And for to, for us to create. I'm sorry. Just. You know, but for us to create a religion around trying to repair one another all the time without the elements that he set forth a long time ago and said, this is my reality. This is my reality. And, you know, you see that in the book of Hebrews, but you, you see it right here in these verses. Let's, let's keep going. <clears throat> Verse 32, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Now keep going because there, there's, there's actually no break in this sentence and in this flow. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Okay, so here we have it. <clears throat> there, is, there is this which is Christ and there is this which is us. And he can fill anything. He can fill anything if we allow that. And, but we have to allow him to be the fulfillment of it before he fills it. Okay. He has to, we have to see the reality of something. And then we have to let Christ, and we have to see him that he's the fulfillment of it. And then we have to pursue him to fill that. And that's the only thing that makes any of this, even in the Old Testament, worth anything was that in the Lord's mind he filled Jesus Christ and him crucified filled all of that to him now to somebody else they can look and go well it's just tents and people and they just you know bloody people are killing animals and there's nothing there's no no real deal to it well, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what any of those people think it only matters that the Lord set this up and he set it up according to the pattern that is him. The pattern that is him. And to know him, then you begin to, to understand these things. But so we go, okay, well, I'm going to pursue a deep understanding of the tabernacle and all of it. <laughs> You're just wrong. I mean, you can, you can go there, but your heart has to cry out, Lord, I don't want to learn stupid stuff from long ago, but I do want to be there and find you as the fulfillment of it. Does that, does that make sense? It's, it's like, you know, the, you know, someone would say, you know, to me, well, the old, old covenant, you know, has passed away, so no, none of that. Well, the old covenant did pass away, but the new covenant, I mean, it, was, it wasn't until the fourth century that they even started compiling a new testament. Yeah. The fourth century, they started compiling a New Testament and calling it the New Testament. So that means for the longest time, everything was flowing out. And this is, this, is, this is Paul writing this right here. And he's describing this altar of incense as well as the sweet savor offerings. He's describing that. But you see, there is no way that you're, gonna, you're going to let all bitterness and wrath be gone and be kind one to another. You're not. You, you're a bunch of brats as well as I am. We all need Jesus. We all need the Lord. And we're not going to do that. And we can read that scripture till our eyes fall out on the page and it's not going to change anything. The only thing that's going to change anything in any human being is that he's pursuing the Lord and, you know, when these start matching up and they do match up, New, new Testament, New Covenant, New explanation of what was said in the old 
which is Christ, the fulfillment which they didn't see and they didn't perceive and they didn't pursue and they killed lamb after lamb after lamb after lamb after lamb and never saw a lamb. <laughs> never saw a lamb, him. Never saw a lamb. They only saw what much of Christianity gets out of it. And that is, Jesus died for my sins so that God loves me and he loves me because he killed Jesus. Because I was so lovable, he just slaughtered Jesus just to show how much he loves me. I mean, that's the way we say it. You know? And, you know, I, I know God loves you, but, you know, he, you know, he, you know, they always say, just as I am, that's right, come just as you are, but he doesn't leave you just as you are. You get born again. You leave your first birth. You leave all the things that, you leave your father and your mother, and you cleave to another, and you become <coughs> one with this lamb so, so that these things can become possible. But as long as we're still the same people trying to apply ridiculous things to ourselves and make it happen, that ultimately that just leads to discouragement. The best thing to do is go to a church where they don't press the point. Really, it is. It truly is. Just find a place where they'll just tell you God loves you and just like you are and just stay just the way you are and just live that way. And Jesus, Jesus took us to the cross. Jesus took us to the altar. And then, and then the promise was, see, that was the altar out here, the brazen altar. But then the promise was as we proceed, as we proceed, not automatically, not magically, but as we proceed through the things that we've discussed, like eating bread, you know, communing with him, because you have to commune before you can live it. You, in other words, you both have to be on the same page before you can be on the same page <laughs> in, in a real way, in a living way, okay? So, so you have to proceed until you get before the altar. And let me tell you, what that, the, the altar of incense, let me tell you, before you go in there with God, your best friend is the altar of incense because you must be covered in that sweet savor so much so that, you know, you go, well, how do you find your way around in here? It's so, there's so much smoke and, you know, whatever that I can't, you know where the Ark of the Covenant is. The priest knew where it was. He knew what he was supposed to do. It's better to be blind and covered in incense than to know truth and try to act like you got something. It just is. It really is. But see that those are hard issues. Those are those are issues that that get to a point and says, no more, no more, Randy, no more fooling around, no more just claiming truths and thinking that that makes you something. When in reality, you're still what you were before. You know the example I've always used, and I know we're fixing to quit here. The example I always use is. You know, these people that, that get become superheroes, uh, Spider-Man, he gets bit by a spider, and now he's got all these superpowers. But whatever problems he had before he got bit, he still has. You know what I mean? If he's selfish or mean-spirited, or da -da -da, but they always, all the superheroes are always really nice. Spider bites make you nice, or bats that scare the heck out of you or something, you know. Or No, 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 and that's why many of us, those shows now are showing darker side of superheroes and stuff like that. Well, that's the same true of us. We're not superheroes. But we arm ourselves as if we are with truth and or truths with truths that we've seen. Oh, I can tell you all about the tabernacle. Can you tell me all about Jesus? And can you tell me all about Christ crucified in you, burning in you? And you being covered with the smoke of that, the reality of that, the incense of that, so that God doesn't strike you dead. Wait a minute, I saw a little bit of you. Bam! You know? Amen. So guess what? We just ran out of time.
All right, take a little break and we'll, we'll come back.